Okay. So, so now, let, now we're going to apply this same exercise that we just did. So, so here what we did, we showed that there is no fundamental difference between language change in English versus language change in the history of Asian Creole, right? Because what we're doing here, we're, we're questioning this notion that Creole formation is something which is very idiosyncratic, which separates Creoles from non-Creoles in a fundamental sense. Now, now what we're going to do, we're going to look at the history of French itself from Latin, and we're going to ask, so does that history, is it supposed to be, um, can it be in any way compared to what happened in the history of Creole? In fact, what we're going to see is that if we compare Latin and French, in many ways, they show that French also out Creole, Asian Creole, right? So we're just going to do it very, in fact, it's, it's, what I'm going to do now is very tendentious, okay? So, but I'm warning you that it's tendentious. Um, because it, and, but what I'm doing that when I'm comparing French and Latin is exactly what uh, other languages do when they compare, say, Haitian Creole to other languages. They pick a small set of patterns, and they say, well, look, this set of patterns make Creoles look really special. So now I'm picking this set of patterns, actually, which are very fundamental to the grammar of, of any language, right, which is the, the order of words. So... Uh, and this is, so scrambling is a technical term. Um, so if, that means that, I, any of you know German? Who knows German? You know German, okay, so, okay, you, you can. So, in, so German has, a, has, a, has this property that you can pronounce, the, so you, if you say, you know, say, I don't know, Mary loves pancakes, right? You can move things around. You can say pancakes loves Mary, right? <laughs> Right? The, the verb has to be this. The yeah, yeah, but the arguments can move around. So the verb is, is, is as a st strict position, but then arguments can move around. They can come first. You know. And Latin is of the same nature. Any of you has studied Latin? Any of you knows Latin? I know Arabic. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh. It's the same in Arabic. Too. Okay, yeah. okay. So many languages have this capacity call that actually, certain kinds of languages like at MIT, we call it scrambling, right? It's like scramble egg. <laughs> you can scramble things around. So you can have a sentence, you have the subject, the verb, and the object. And if you have other things like, um, I don't know, like object, if you say like John gave a book to Mary, you have three um, roles in that sentence. You know, the giver, what's being given, what received, what's being given. Um, and things can move around in the sentence. They can be scrambled. Now, Latin has that. Uh, you can scramble things around, not French. Um, so case is, is like in Latin, right? When you say, you know, girl, it's like puela, puelum, puela, <laughs> right? You can, you, you, you indicate like in German. That's because Latin has uh, and leans heavily on noun and verb endings. Exactly. That's so, e exactly, exactly. So those two things are connected. Good point, good point, Jonathan. So, so in, in, in Latin, you have these endings that are called case, case declensions that tell you whether the, the noun is a subject, is an object, and, and, and with that, you can move things around more easily. Now, notice that you have it in Latin, and in French, you don't. So in French, like in English, you only have case marking like on pronouns, like he versus him versus his. Okay, you, you have that on pronouns, but you don't have it on nouns. You don't have the equivalent of he, he, him, he, him, his. You don't have that on, on nouns, right? But, but in Latin, any noun will have to carry an ending that tells you, is it a subject, is it an object? Um, that, that it's called case. So you have overt case. Okay? In Latin, you, you don't have articles like the. That, you know, so if, if you learn Latin, you have to learn that you don't have a the. In French, you have a the. So these are four basic properties that you find in Latin that you don't find in French. Right? So, so the point is that, well, look, you know, along these four major parameters, French is very different from Latin. So, which, so if one were to take the, the kind of words that are used to describe Creole, you would say, well, French has broken Latin's grammar. French is broken Latin, right? That's what you would have to say, right? Because we have four basic properties of, of Latin that somehow French speakers have lost as they learned to speak Latin and created French. Now, guess what? If we take those very same properties and we compare French and Haitian Creole, they are the same. You know, canonical order, both languages, ex ex well, we saw that for pronouns, we don't have, we have, we have a difference for pronouns, but for full nouns, um, you have the same verb object order. Scrambling, French and Creole behave the same. Overt case, the same. 
article the same. Right? So what does that show? That uh, at least along these four parameters, Haitian Creole is much better behaved <laughs> than, than French. <laughs> you know, so in fact, so I, I, if, you were to, if you were to create a degree of, of Creole-ness based on how broken the grammar is, which is often what language, what not, well, lay people do often, they think of Creole as you know, Jamaican Creole is broken English, French, uh, Haitian Creole is broken French. So here you'd have to say then that French is broken Latin. And actually, this is, there is a very well-known historical linguist called Antoine Meillet. Antoine Meillet was aware of that. Antoine Meillet actually wrote something which I find very striking. He said that, you know, if we, if we compare the Roman languages, not, not only French, but Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, um, Romanian, you know, so they are called the Romance languages. Um, actually, I often hear people say the Romantic languages. Now, they're not, they're, they, they can be Romantic, but the technical, <laughs> the, the technical term is ro they are Romance, romance languages. Um, OK, so, so those Romance languages, um, they have structures that are, actually, you use the term fundamentally different from the Latin counterparts. OK, so, so linguists, very smart linguists, are aware of that, and even say that um, this is still Meillet. All this makes, we call it neo-Latin languages, fall into a topological class that is quite remote from the structural type of Latin. And that's very clear, right? That's, how, how could that be uh, any clearer, right? So which means that uh, this notion of, um, of Creole languages having broken the syntax of the European ancestors is, is very tendentious because historical linguists realize that all languages evolve by, through these structural breaks, even those that are often presented as prototypical genetic languages, meaning that languages with parents. So, so go ahead, Nick. Were like, the, were like the Gaulish languages, did they have those like mm -hmm. uh, features, that neo Latin language? Uh, that's, that's, that's a very good question. That's what you would have, yeah, I don't know about Gaulish, and that's what you would want to find out. So, how did French develop those patterns? Is it from the substrate languages like the Gaulish? That's a very good question. Yeah, that's exactly what you would want to ask. Because we know that in the case of Haitian Creole, not all, and I want to stress, not all, but many of the, of the features of Haitian Creole were inherited from the African substrates. Like, for example, the fact that you have the article after the noun, not before the noun, that straights out from the Gbe languages, which have the same pattern. Right, so, uh, so, so the point here, so there's a common thread here in the argument, right? That those breaks that you see in the history of Creole languages, you, you also find them in the history of non-Creole languages. Is Africans a Creole? That, yeah, that's, that's a very good point. So, so there was one language who some time ago um, called Africans a Creole language, and it got into big trouble because the Africans speakers were very upset. Yeah, it's like, yeah it's like the Africans, but like, it's like a Creole, but for Dutch people. That's right, exactly. So the Africaners were upset that they dare compare the African language uh -huh. to to Creole because for them, you know, African was just a, a variety of Dutch, and it should not be. Never call it a Creole. What year was that? Oh, that was that was in the early eighties, I think. Yeah. Early eighties. Um, but that was a very live discussion. In fact, and, and at some point, there was a linguist who had to step back and say, "Well, okay, African is not a Creole; it's a semi-Creole." <laughs> uh. So I, I guess like that's like that shows the... Yeah, definitely. You know, and then, so what I have to ask that linguist, um, actually his name is, is John Holm, uh, late um, John Holm, um, and I asked him, so how do you measure uh, semi-creoleness? So how many features must you have to be a semi-creole, right? So which goes back to that question, I mean, can you define creoleness based on a set of features, which is very problematic, actually. 